Okay, so today I thought we could do something different. We have built a lot of MCP servers on my channel, right? Uh, but today I thought we could do something different. So let's try to create our own custom client. And here you can see my test example. So you can see we have two servers connected. We have my email and a fetch. So you can see we can just start by hey, we're just gonna call up that Claude API here in this case. And we can also follow up. You can see we have my email MCP server. So we can do list my five latest emails. And hopefully this is gonna call up our MCP server that is connected. And we can get a list of my five latest emails from my Gmail that is kind of set up on this server. Perfect. So if you zoom out a bit, you can see we have one, two, three, four. I guess we only have four emails in our inbox. Uh, but yeah, perfect. So you can see this is working. Let's also try the fetch server here. So let's copy the URL here for the client developers MCP and let's do fetch uh, info from the URL and let's paste in this and hopefully now we're gonna call up the fetch MCP server and we will get some information from this URL right. Yeah as you can see based on information fetched uh, MCP client in Python perfect that's exactly what we have here. So this is kind of working so what is pretty cool about building your own MCP client is that everything is customable. All right, I've sent the email about vibe coding to Chris. Okay, so that was just pretty short. I just sent the email to Chris about vibe coding. So here's the email we got. Hey Chris, I hope you find this well. I wanted to share something interesting. It called... So today I thought we can head over to AI Studio and let's build a simple client together. Uh, it's not gonna be exactly what I did, but kind of the same. So yeah, let's just get going and see how I built my custom MCP client. And as always, we're always going to start by collecting some documentation, some context we need this. So, like I said, we were on the Anthropic MCP uh, documentation here. And we're going to just copy this quick start for client developers. Uh, we're going to be using Node today, so you can see all the examples is going to be in that. So, uh, I'm just going to copy all the documentation here. Uh, let's head to cursor, let's paste this in here, right, into a markdown file. And we can use this markdown file now in our AI studio. So I'm just going to put this into our context here, right? Great. I always like to put down the temperature a bit. So do 0.7, right? We have the 2.5. Great. So let's come up with a kind of initial prompt here to get us started. So let's just try to keep this simple. I want to build my own MCP client with a backend server and a modern front end in a web browser using React uh, TSX. Uh, I don't want to use Chad CN here and can you help me write the code and a step-by-step -step guide to set this up. So now we kind of have everything fed into our Gemini here. Uh, let's just run this, right? I'm just going to turn off this dark mode here, okay? Uh, and we're just going to wait for the answer here and then we're going to start building out our MCP client in here, right? Uh, okay, so we have the answer here. So here's kind of our project structure. So what I like to do when I get this structure, I just like to, let's just copy this, right? This, and I like to use cursor for this. So let's just open up the chat here. And I like to select the agent, uh, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, right? And uh, let's just do all this and create my uh, three structure. Uh, use one line. Uh, placeholder called something like this. So let's just try to create this structure here now before we move on. Okay, perfect. So now you can see I double checked this. Uh, our structure is now set up and that's great. So I'm just going to accept all here. And uh, now we can start actually, if we zoom out a bit here and we look further down, you can see uh, we're going to initialize this in our backend servers. That's going to be the first thing we're going to do. And we're going to install some dependencies in our server here. I'm not a big fan of this copy paste thing, but uh, I'm trying to get used to it again using uh, Gemini 2.5. Okay, so let's copy the TS config. We need a .env file, so we can just copy this. So I don't think you need to see me copy everything in, so I'm just going to speed this up. And I'll kind of take you back when we are getting, when we have filled out everything Gemini wrote for us here. Okay, so now we kind of added most of the code from Gemini. Uh, we need to add this MCP server script path, right? 
and this could be pre-existing MCP servers to have you have set up locally. This could probably host that MCP servers, but basically what I'm gonna use is uh, something I've been using before, and this is my email server, right? We can zoom in a bit. So I'm just gonna find the path to my build index.js. So I'm just gonna copy this absolute path here, and I'm gonna go back here, and I'm just gonna paste this path in here. So now this is pointing to my build index.js. Perfect. So uh, I guess we probably want to try to run this now, but I guess we have some kind of issues, uh, most likely. So you can see we have some, yeah, we have some small issues here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, right? This error message. Uh, let's head back here to Gemini. And let's just paste in, uh, help me fix this. See if we can do that. We might have to add some more context, but let's just try to get our backend server up and running first, and then we're gonna try uh, our front end. Okay, so we went a bit back and forward, uh, and just some simple things. Uh, let's try to run the server now. You can see uh, we are actually listening on port 3001 now. Uh, MCP server might still be pending or failed. So I guess we just have to put up our, um, front end now and just see what the status is, right? So let's move on to our front end. Okay, so let's try to run this now. So let's do an npm run dev, let's pop up this. Uh, okay, MCP web client, disconnected from the MCP server, check backend logs. Okay, so we have the UI, that's at least somewhat okay. So let's check our console here. No errors here, check backend logs, okay. Okay, so you can see, I think we have a solution here now. We need to front, uh, make the front end uh, accept the data structure. The back end is actually sending. So we're gonna modify our chat interface TSX to handle the server structure. So uh, I went ahead, I did that. So let's try to restart this now. I also asked for a dark team connected to MCP server, perfect. So let's try this now. Let's just do a hello first. You can zoom out a bit. Okay, perfect, so now you can see we get the response, so we can do list my five or four latest emails. Let's see if the server works. Perfect, okay, so it wasn't really good formatted, but you can see we fetched a email from Reddit, and that is how easy you can just set up your own client. Uh, so what is pretty cool now is that we can kind of do whatever we want, right? Uh, but there's one thing we have to fix, and that is to have some, uh, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, contextual setup, so kind of memory. Uh, so let's tr test this now. What was email one? So you can see I don't have enough context for this, right? So what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to copy this, right, this conversation. And we can go back to, let's go back to Gemini. Okay, so what I did is I just pasted in our conversation. The issue is that we don't store context, so the AI can't, so we can't ask follow-up questions. We need to store some of the context for a nice experience. Please integrate some contextual memory. So this is quite important, right, when we need this uh, in our app here, because if we fetch our email but we can't do any follow-up, that's not gonna help us, right? So let's see what Gemini 2.5 here can help us set this up. And I already have some IDs for our client. I think we're gonna do voice response or something like that. And we can integrate the voice response into our client and set this up with MCP. So, but first let's try to fix this contextual memory and let's uh, try that out first. So you can see the plan is to, when we send the query, include recent messenger history wrong along with the new query, that's good. Uh, to avoid exceeding lead token limits, modify the endpoint to accept messages from the history from the front end, pass this history to MCP service, okay. Uh, yeah, that seems pretty good. So we're gonna change our app TSX and probably something on our server. But let's start with our app TSX here. Okay, so let's copy that. App TSX, let's update this, right? Let's grab our new server code. Go to our backend, server TS, paste in this. Okay, so let's restart the server. Yeah, we are connected. Let's restart our front end. 
Okay, so we are connected. So let's do list uh, my latest email. I kind of like don't like this format. But let's see here. Okay, good. Let's try to do some contextual uh, follow up here. Extract the from address and only return this. So this should be this, right? Okay, yeah. So now we kind of have some contextual memory. That is a good start. Uh, is there anything else we want to do? Uh, basically, now we can kind of do whatever we want with this client. So uh, I wanted to change it up a bit. Let's try, I want to try to add some kind of voice feature here using the OpenAI TTS. And to do that, let's go to the OpenAI docs and let's find, is it text to speech? Text to speech and let's grab this documentation. Let's do a new markdown file here. Okay, uh, I think we also need the OpenAI API key. So I'm gonna grab that. So I updated my ENV. Now we're just gonna, I think we're just gonna grab. So let's take our OpenAI docs here and put it in here. Uh, let me do a prompt. Okay, so we are good to go. Next, we want our MCP client app to respond using the OpenAI text-to-speech. Uh, so all responses from Claude API must be turned into a voice using the TTS model. Played it in our app. Can you help me set this up? In my ENV, I have loaded my OpenAI API key. So hopefully now we're just going to do some server changes and we're going to integrate our OpenAI TTS model. And when we run this again, uh, we might have to change this. So we kind of need to just return kind of the, yeah, we don't want to return all of this, right? So we want a summarized version of each MCP call to return as text. But let's see how this works out of the box now first. Okay, so we updated our back end, we updated our front end, and let's launch this now, right? So let's just start up the back end. Let's start up the front end again. Open this. So it looks pretty much the same. I guess we messed it up a bit, but that's fine. So let's try this now. Let's start with something simple. Yes, I do have access to several email related tools. Here are the email functions available. One, send email. This function allows you to send an email by specifying recipients, subject, and body content. Okay, great. So that worked pretty good, right? Uh, let's try to change up this format here. I hate it. It's like a mobile setup. I don't like that. So let's change this up. So let's copy the image. Let's go here. Uh, let's paste in the image. Like this. Uh, this is a mobile setup UI. Uh, UI. Let's uh, make it a web app, please. I hate it. But uh, the image, <laughs> the voice worked, so that's pretty cool. I think the final thing we have to do for our client is to make the responses very short and on point, so we don't say every single thing of word that is returned. So let's try to fix that, so we get like a very concise uh, response that is fitted for the voice over. So the final prompt is going to be, now we swap the voice, we want to really condense the response from the Cloud AI API to a natural conversation response. Let's make it happen so the user gets a nice experience. I think this is going to be the final thing we integrate into our client now. So hopefully all the responses now will be very natural and short. So we don't uh, just uh, yeah, turn every text into voice. We want to be selective and just return what is important. And by doing that, you can see the new UI here. So by doing that, I think we will get a pretty nice uh, MCP client uh, that uh, uses speech. So let's see what we can do here. So the plan now is going to be to modify the instructions and to Claude before the final call. So we're going to yeah, create a response as usual, but uh, we do some tags, speak, speak and parse this, and we're gonna do like a, yeah, I think that's a good plan. Uh, I would have probably done it a bit different, but let's try it out. Okay, so let's try this now after we hopefully can reduce the output. So I'm just gonna come up with a prompt here. So I'm just gonna send, find the latest email from Chris and give me the most important info. So let's see if this works now. 
I found an email from Chris about an AI video course with a 50% discount offer. Yeah, that is exactly what we wanted. So you can see, even though we kind of returned uh, everything from the MCP server, the voiceover was different. It kind of summarized everything. So we just said we found our latest Chris uh, email from Chris with a 50% discount offer. So yeah, that is perfect. Okay, so let's try to do something different too. So let's grab the vibe coding, uh, what do you call it? Tweet from Andre Karpathy. And uh, let's paste this in here. And I'm gonna ask it to make an email that we can send. And, but I'll, I'm gonna ask to just uh, read up a short summary of the email we're gonna send. All right, I've sent the email about vibe coding to Chris. Okay, so that was just pretty short. I just sent the email to Chris about vibe coding. So here is the email we got. Hey Chris, I hope you find this well. I wanted to share something interesting. It's called vibe coding, changing the approach software development. Uh, you just fully give into the vibes. If the LLM can fix a bug, work around it. Best regards, your name. So it did work, right? Our MCP server did send the email. I guess the, the summary of the text was a bit short, uh, but let's try to follow up here to text, test the contextual context. Also, what's interesting is even though we returned this, just to, to see in the app here, the email was something different, right? Let's just try, teach me vibe coding in 20 seconds. All right, I've sent you a quick 20 second guide to vibe coding via email. Okay, so I guess it's kind of obsessed by the email, but uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna call it there. We could have, of course, worked a lot more on this uh, MCP client, but uh, basically today's video is, I just wanted to give you some ideas of what you can do. Uh, I know a lot of you like to develop a servers, but uh, there could be some nice advantages to also creating your local client. Uh, if you want to have a bit more control of the cost, if you use cloud code, that can get really expensive. Cursor and Windsurf, you have a bit more control, but I guess creating your uh, very simple, yeah, setup here, local cl uh, client, uh, you can do things that uh, the others don't have. So like we did, we added voice, but uh, we could add memory, we could add databases and a whole bunch of stuff into this client and basically turn it into whatever you want. Uh, like the client I showed you earlier, it was a bit more stylish. We had the terminal right, and we have all the MCP server connected. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff we can do here. So I just don't wanted to do some change up. Instead of creating a server, we created a client. So I thought it was pretty cool, and it's definitely not gonna be the last time we do this. So we're gonna explore this uh, client side more. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you again very soon.